The OCD and Anxiety Podcast by Robert James Coaching. Hello and welcome to the OCD and Anxiety Podcast, where we explore how to have a more positive relationship with anxiety disorders taking back control so that you can start living the life you choose and not the one chosen by your fears. Hello and welcome to episode 387. We are fast approaching episode 400, which will be a bonanza of uh, OCD episodes. Number 400. Wow, I can't believe that we are actually moving along so quickly with uh, with the podcast, but it's great as well. And yeah, you guys are a big part of that. So thank you very much for tuning in. This episode is all about learning how to bring more patience to the impatience that we all experience when we're trying to deal with OCD because of course it can be so frustrating so annoying when you're putting effort in and sometimes it feels like you're making progress and other times it can feel like you're you're kind of having setbacks along the way that is a perfectly normal thing but it can be very difficult to to deal with that sometimes so Today we're going to be talking about that. If you would like to get a free session with me, then you can. You can head over to my uh, to my website, robertjamescoaching.com. There you can book in for that free session, or if you uh, prefer, you can just send me a message and let me know about what you're struggling with. The podcast is now also on YouTube, so if you're interested in following there, you can as well. So many thanks, guys. I really hope that you enjoy. And if you have any questions, do please let me know. Off we go. We are going to start with a quote by Carl Jung. Even a happy life cannot be without a measure of darkness, and the word happy would lose its meaning if it were not balanced by sadness. It is far better to take things as they come along with patience and equanimity. And this quote today obviously is really pointing out some of the kind of harsher realities of of life that, you know, there is this kind of balancing force that seems to be a part of life that as as much as you know we want to experience the good things the positive things the joy of life humor pleasure fun all of these kinds of things that really make life worthwhile and interesting there is also this this shadow that obviously young is very fa- uh, famous for you know the kind of darker side of life the the things that are you know, much more difficult to deal with things like anxiety, sadness, fear, shame, regret, all of these things that, you know, we don't really want to kind of talk about as much or we don't want to experience as much. You know, a big part of the work of Young was really kind of reflecting on how we can incorporate that that shadow more into our lives, how we can accept that shadow that's there. And and really, when you think about kind of OCD and having to to learn how to manage it, deal with it, have patience with it, so much of that is actually learning how to experience these difficult emotions. Because the more that we can allow them to be, accept them, explore them, be interested in them, or curious with um, about them. Well, then we start incorporating those kind of shadow emotions, those difficult emotions, and they don't bother us in quite the same way anymore. I think we start becoming a much more balanced person. And, you know, this kind of work is incredibly important. I think it's something that, you know, maybe we don't talk about enough. Obviously, we're focused very much on doing exposure work, on acceptance commitment therapy, but this idea of you know, actually working on the more difficult emotions. Well, it was something that Carl Jung talked a, a lot about, and I think it's something that's really, really interesting. The The title of today's podcast is obviously about having patience for the impatience that we experience. And I know this is something that impacted me a lot when I was really struggling. And even today, if I have, you know, moments where maybe I fall back into a rumination again, or I find myself obsessing about something, 
I can get very annoyed and angry and impatient with myself. What am I doing? I know better than this. Why have I fallen back into this trap? This is ridiculous. You know, in the last podcast, I was talking about judgments. And of course, OCD is all about judgment. You know, we tend to have a very strong inner critic. And, you know, that, that judge, judgmentalness can really focus in on, you know, that things should be better now. They should be better as soon as possible. And we don't have time for OCD. We do not want to have it any more today. It needs to be gone immediately. You know, and we absolutely definitely do not want to have to deal with it at all at any point in the future. Because now we've done the work. We've done exposure work or we've done acceptance commitment therapy. Surely now it should leave us alone and just let us get on with our lives and be happy. But I think the problem with with that kind of outlook, and you know, that's an outlook that I struggle with uh, myself, as I was pointing out. At times, if we if we focus on trying to to kind of manage OCD in that way, where we're kind of saying, "Well, I want I want it to be night and day," you know, it's very much getting caught up in kind of this this idea of things have to be like this. And if they're not, if they're not perfect, or if they're not the way I want them to be, then that's unacceptable. I'm not going to be able to be happy. I'm not going to be able to enjoy myself. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to miss out on life because this thing isn't in the way that I want it to be. And unfortunately, what what that is, is kind of just, it's showing that we, we're kind of demanding that life be on our exact terms. And if it's not, we're kind of saying, well, then I can't be happy. You know, I can't actually live a good life if things aren't exactly how I want them to be. And of course, unfortunately, life isn't like that. And the more that we allow, you know, the the kind of uncertainties of life, the difficulty of the emotions uh, to come up and, and to be present for us as hard as that can be and obviously it really can be incredibly difficult at, at times but the more that we are able to do that the more that we're bringing a sense of balance to our lives and we're also being more patient with ourselves this impatience is it really comes up a lot when we have setbacks with OCD so maybe you have been doing the work and you've made some improvements you're feeling a little bit more open to uncertainty perhaps you're you're allowing you know your, yourself to to kind of go and do some things that you've been avoiding important things to you maybe you have a bit more flexibility in your life but then from nowhere a huge trigger comes along and you find yourself going back into those old patterns of behavior. Suddenly, you're just doing the compulsions again. And, you know, you, you've kind of convinced yourself that you've gone back to square one. You know, you haven't gone back to square one in in that example. What's happened is you, you've had a setback, which is a normal part of the process of of dealing with OCD and overcoming OCD. You are going to have those setbacks as you try to learn new things and develop yourself. You know, it's a process of kind of neuroplasticity. You're learning these new skills. You're developing them. You know, but old habits can be kind of uh, difficult to change at times, particularly when you're learning. And so it can be easy to kind of just fall back into those old circuits or those old ways of being because they never quite completely disappear. Yeah, maybe you're using them uh, a lot less, those, those old circuits in your brain, but potentially they are you know, always there. We can very easily kind of fall back into it if we're not being careful and if we're not kind of uh, uh, working on that patience, really, when we do have these uh, setbacks. So, you know, if you are experiencing moments like this and you're getting, you know, really angry and upset about it, of course, it it kind of makes sense that you would get angry and upset about it because it is very frustrating if you've made progress and suddenly you, you feel like you've taken two or three steps back. You're going to get annoyed and you're going to get frustrated. But the important thing is to try your very best to to recognize what's going on here, you know, to be patient with yourself and patient with the situation you're you're trying to change something that you've been doing perhaps for a long time 
you're applying these new skills and it you know what it takes is just consistent practice each day despite the fact that some days you may feel like you're having setbacks you know actually if you start to kind of improve from OCD if you start to perform less compulsions unfortunately because of this this want for familiarity that so many of us I think struggle with your brain might actually start to kind of give you more triggers because it wants you to be doing the familiar thing. It wants you to be ruminating and performing compulsions and doing all the things that kind of keep you stuck because that's that's more familiar than actually kind of just living your life and, and kind of being comfortable and being happy and being engaged and living with your values. There's this familiarity that a lot a lot of people have where they're more used to kind of doing compulsions or getting caught up in their thoughts and ruminating. And so when you begin to change that and you're actually being successful – your mind may not like that. Of course, this isn't for everyone, but it, it may, uh, for many of you, you, you may kind of think, yeah, that, that's me. May, maybe, um, you know, it makes sense to, to you and your particular understanding of OCD and how it works out for you. And certainly it has been the case for me that when I begin to improve, I get more triggers. It's almost like my brain doesn't want me to change it wants me to go back and to do the old things that were keeping me stuck because I was more used to that and when we step out and we start to try to do new things you know it can be very difficult uh, for the brain and the body to kind of keep up with that and to, to kind of you have to keep really trying very hard because when you get these triggers the temptation is obviously going to be to start Uh, performing the compulsions again and you've really got to recognize that you know maybe the reason for why you're getting more of the triggers isn't because you're necessarily having a setback but perhaps it's actually the opposite you're actually you know doing a bit better you're managing things more you're spending less time in your head less time ruminating less time performing physical compulsions and you know therefore your mind is really you know, trying to catch you out, it's trying to get you to go back to the old habits. You know, and if we can view it like that, then perhaps it might give us a bit more patience with the fact that, you know, we are struggling on a particular day, that we are finding it it difficult. It's just the mind trying to catch us out. It's not necessarily that the mind is against us. I don't think it's very helpful to kind of think like that. You know, but it may just be that that the mind is wanting you to do the familiar thing because you know ruminating, compulsing in different ways is perhaps more familiar than than living your life in a healthy way in relation to acceptance commitment therapy, for example. You know, living by your values, getting out there, facing fears and uncomfortable situations. This may be, you know, a very strange thing to do for you, and it may be very uncomfortable to do that. And so, of course, that could be why, you know, your 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 brain is giving you excuses for why you should just go back and start compulsing again, or why you should just pay attention to that thought that you really thought that you'd kind of put into uh, into check. And here it is again with a new kind of take on it, and it's catching you out. So often when we get caught out by those sneaky uh, thoughts that, you know, they pop up, at, they pop up out of nowhere and suddenly they seem so tempting. We're like, oh, that's a new take on that particular thought. I really need to think about this now. I really need to give it some, some thoughts so that I can figure it out and get to the bottom of it and then I can feel comfortable. Well, actually, in those situations, normally the best thing you can do is just acknowledge the fact that your brain has just been very creative it's come up with a new thing to try and catch you almost like a fisherman that's throwing out uh you know tasty bait on a hook and are we going to take that bait or not are we just going to try our best despite the fact that we're feeling this urge to kind of take a big bite out of that bait are we going to do our best to just kind of swim on by observe the bait but you know, don't take the bite because we know it's just the brain that's trying to get us to do that familiar thing. You know, patience, it's it's so, so important when it comes to OCD. I think we need to bring self-compassion 
uh, to it. We don't need to be perfect at patience. Of course, sometimes we are going to get frustrated. Sometimes we're going to get angry and that's okay. And again, that's kind of part of the, the kind of shadow emotions. They're allowed to be there. Try to feel those. But just keep reminding yourself, you're just doing the best that you can. And, you know, perhaps perhaps the setbacks that you think you're having are actually not quite as bad as maybe you first thought. So there we go, guys. I really hope that you enjoyed that one. Um, If you have any questions at all, uh, please do let me know. And I will see you next time. Just a quick reminder that if you want to get a free session, all you need to do to get that is to head over to my website, www.robertjamescoaching.com. And there you can leave me a message and we can arrange the uh, free session. And now just a quick reminder of my disclaimer. Any information that you view on my website, Instagram page, Facebook group, or anywhere else online, or any information that you listen to on the podcast is for informational purposes only and is not intended to be a substitute for actual medical or mental health advice from a doctor, psychologist, or any other medical or mental health professional. 